heart, heart. Hi guys and welcome to the circus. So today we're gonna be talking about something quite special. <laughs> we're gonna be talking about Barra Magnus for the flicking, I don't know how many times I've talked about this deck now. <laughs> but I think this will be the last one before set three at least because we're still waiting for our boy Greedon. As you might have noticed already, I love Byron Magnus. It's my favorite deck in Overdress as of now. And probably until we see more aesthetics of Pale Moon. But even if a ride line like that would come out someday, I would still be going back to Byron Magnus every now and then because it's just that fun of a deck. In the current DBTO2 meta, Barrow Magnus at first kinda struggled to compete against the most powerful decks in Overdress at the moment. And with that, some Barrow Magnus players on set 1 started to change it up and then making a playstyle that can possibly still compete amongst the best decks. Which is very very cool to see. I myself made my own build, other content creators starting to show their own builds, some people at our discord shared their own playstyle towards the deck. Because Bar Magnus needed to adapt to at least keep up to the power level of the top decks in Overdress at the moment, new playstyles for the deck started to bloom. And on this video, we are going to be breaking down each playstyle that revolves around Barrow Magnus. But before I do so, I would like to tell you that the majority of the people that are watching my videos are still not subscribed yet. So if you are one of those people, please just scroll down a bit hit the red button because I would really appreciate if you do so. Generally, there are currently three existing playstyles for Barrow Magnus. These playstyles are the general playstyles that I know and I have seen because each one can still have a variety of options you can choose from. First, is the Rush 15 build where every single card in your deck is purely cards that can soul charge, which is also the most common playstyle that I have seen. Next is staying at 10 soul and then slowly reach 15 or at least if you need to reach 15. And the third one is a bit of a tempo type deck where most likely they want to reach 15 soul on turn 4 onwards. So these are the three playstyles and a few days back, I asked in our discord about what particular playstyle of Bar Magnus do they mostly prefer. Because I personally have my own favorite playstyle but I don't want this video to be like a one-sided opinion only. So I want to get as much people as possible into this video in order to share to everyone the different perspectives that they have. Also you guys in the comment section, you can also share your ideas or your preferences as well because we would like to read them. You can also give some more more information, some more feedback, some deck lists, and basically more information or more explanations on why you like that certain playstyle. And who knows, maybe we can start a conversation there. I'll be sharing first the opinions of the people at our Discord. If you want to read some of them, you can pause the video or you can just hop onto our Discord directly and then read them as you will. Thank you so much to the people that responded to my question. Every single reply you guys gave were really appreciated. And with that, let us now start to compare each general playstyle to each other. First, let us take a look at the Rush 15 build. We will start on the Rush 15 build because again, this is the most common playstyle that I've seen and probably everybody else have seen this one as well. In my previous deck profile, I said there that this particular playstyle isn't really that good. But to be honest, I would really like to take that back to an extent because I might have honestly underestimated it a bit. After I uploaded the video, I started to try it out myself. Making the deck doesn't really require that much brain power because basically everything in the deck is supposed to be a soul charging piece which isn't really that hard to manage or make. So I went with it and then after all my playtesting, I would honestly say that it's really really strong. The game plan of the build is to simply reach 15 soul on turn 3. And to do so, you need to have the most consistency when it comes to having cards in your hand that can soul charge. Which ended up resulting to your deck being purely cards that can soul charge. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of this playstyle. When it comes to the advantages, what I like the most about this build is it punishes early rush. Almost everybody pretty much know by now that rushing any Dark States deck is a very viable strategy because most of our hand is key pieces for the late game, especially when it comes to Bruce and in terms of Biomagnus, everything is supposed to be soul charging pieces. 
so those cards cannot guard normally, which opens the deck to a very vulnerable state. However, unlike Bruce that most likely will have a vanilla turn 3, Baromagnus that rushes 15 soul easily punishes a player that commits a lot of cards on the board just to rush you. Which also leads to the second advantage that I found out, which it ruins the opponent's tempo very easily. Because you clear their board on turn 3, your opponent's tempo just easily shuts down, except against some certain matchups that can easily flood their board out of nowhere, like for example the whole Stoikea Nation. But besides from that, if your opponent actually commits a lot of cards early just to rush you and then you clear their board, most likely their hand size isn't really that good enough to come back from that loss, which will ruin their tempo starting on your turn 3. With that in mind, another advantage that I found out is that Baro Magnus that rushes 15 soul on turn 3 has the strongest first grade 3 turn in the game by far. There's no doubt about it. First of all, it punishes your opponent on turn 3. It has the most attacks in a turn which is most likely going to be 5 attacks per turn starting on that point. And from then on, you will always gonna be a threat to your opponent. The next advantage that I found out is that this build is strong both going first and going second. Which is very very flexible because it's just very simple to play which is the next advantage that I found out. You don't need to think that much in this deck. The only aim is to soul charge 15 and that's it. If it did that already on turn 3, the next objective is to survive. Which now brings me to the disadvantages of this particular playstyle. The first disadvantage of this game plan, and probably the biggest disadvantage, is that it is extremely vulnerable early, especially going second. Just because everything in your hand needs to be cards that soul charges, and if your opponent knows what kind of playstyle you are playing, you're open to rush like I said before. You're not gonna be able to guard anything and your only hope to survive are defensives. If you just couldn't get a single defensive, you will just be run over by your opponent very early. And if you happen to reach 15 soul on turn 3, if they can still put out just a decent board on their turn after you scooped in their entire board, you will most likely lose anyway. Because the only thing that you're gonna rely on afterwards is the plus 3 that Baro Magnus gives you. If you couldn't get any good cards out of those 3 cards, especially defensive cards like triggers and some blitz orders if you run blitz orders you will most likely lose which also brings me to the next disadvantage which is it has no hand on turn 3 after you commit your entire hand just to soul charge 15 you don't have hand cards anymore most likely you will remain with one card or maybe luckily two cards and after that you are going to be relying on the plus three that your Bio Magnus gives which isn't really a good game plan to begin with and also relying on triggers just to serve very early is not gonna be a very reliable strategy. The next disadvantage that I found out is probably the key term for this build which is glass cannon. If you didn't know this term it means that it's a kind of playstyle that works well but when it happens you are gonna be vulnerable to literally anything. It's just like what it literally says. Just imagine a cannon made out of glass. After it fires it breaks because most of the time this will be the case on this particular playstyle because again you won't have hand cards starting turn 3 you are most likely already been rushed by your opponent you won't have that much options after your turn 3 and basically you're just gonna hope that your opponent doesn't have the means to kill you on their turn the next disadvantage that I found out which is probably one of the most awkward here which is the mulligan your mulligan is so clunky you're just hoping to get pieces that can soul charge you 15 on turn 3 right so with that you will most likely discard anything that won't soul charge which are namely pgs and triggers which are again the only source of defense that the deck has the last disadvantage that i found out is that after your 15 soul your other cards are basically useless let's say you have reached 15 soul right if you draw more curtis if you draw more abnormality extraction if you draw more brother's soul those cards are basically almost useless especially those cards that doesn't have shield which makes the deck unable to adapt to any situation so those were all the advantages and disadvantages of that particular playstyle. let's move on to the next playstyle, which is the stay at 10 soul and then slowly reach 15 or if you want to reach 15. It's a particular playstyle that I rarely see at the moment. I tried to play it before and 
I don't know. I was just really adapting to it at first and then I ended up dropping it. I played it a few times and I would say that it's pretty fun because it has more things that it can offer besides from soul charging. So out of my few playtesting, these are the advantages that I found out. First of all, it has lesser soul charging cards needed. You only need to reach 10 soul on turn 3 and then sometimes stick with it throughout the game or at least by the time you really need to reach that 15 soul. Because after turn 3, you still slowly build up to that 15 soul. Which opens up for more utility cards which is the next advantage. It opens you up to run more cards that you want to try out in the deck. Like for example, Cleave Muddler, Freeze Breeze, Javina, Spherical Splasher, and some other cool cards that are released in DBTO2 that haven't had a chance to shine because of the very popular Rush 15 build. Next advantage that I found out is that you can use the Diabolos Ride Line for this particular playstyle. I made a video about using the Diabolos Ride Line for Barrow Magnus. If you want to check it out, I'll leave it in the description for you guys to see. And basically, since this deck doesn't really need to reach 15 soul that soon, you can afford to run the Diabolos Ride Line in order to have a plus on turn 2 while still keeping a pretty decent soul. Next advantage that I found out is that it has a lot of plus. If you run Freeze Breeze, Freeze Breeze can help you plus a lot of cards because you still keep on pressuring on top of the plus one that Bayer Magnus gives you on 10 soul. Basically, this deck is where Freeze Breeze really capitalizes because she stays on the board very frequently. It's also a deck that is pretty simple to play as well, but at least not as simple as the Rush 15 build because again, you can run a lot more utility cards that adds a new level of depth to the deck. Even though this deck is actually really fun and very good, there are still some disadvantages in this particular playstyle, which which makes it somewhat not that good. First disadvantage is that this is the slowest type of playstyle in Bio Magnus because you won't reach 15 soul that soon. You are only relying on your 3 swings and nothing more than that at least before you actually reach 15 which loses a lot of pressure to your opponent. The deck is pretty similar to the power level of Phantom Blaster Dragon except that PBD has Retire and Bio Magnus doesn't but at least Bio Magnus can run the Battle Door units like Shimune and Javina, which is still pressure. The last disadvantage of this deck is that it is more CB oriented. It relies more on CB and you will have less opportunity to counter charge because you don't aim to reach 15 soul on turn 4 onwards, which makes every single engraver that you put in the soul become useless afterwards. So most likely Cleave Muddler will be played here more often just to have more counter charge every turn but with the cost of discarding a card. So this is the breakdown of the second playstyle that I found out and next let us move on to the last playstyle which in particular is one of my favorites and probably even my favorite out of all which is the tempo approach or reach 15 soul on turn 4. This is the playstyle that I went with on my previous deck profile which is the tempo type approach or reach 15 soul at least on turn 4. When it comes to the advantages, the first advantage is a flexible mulligan. Because you don't need to reach 15 soul ASAP, you can just have two cards in your hand that can soul charge two and you're set to 10 soul on turn three. And those three remaining cards in your hand can be anything that can help you survive the early game or at least some utility cards that you can use. Another advantage is that it has a very adaptive 15 soul turn. Each 15 soul skill that you will use will vary depending on the situation. I explained a lot of this in the game flow part of my deck profile. So if you want to watch that as well, please do so. Basically in that list of mine, I ran Napier, which is the 10k shield if you have 5 or more soul, which is very, very easily met in Barrow Magnus. With her in the soul, along with some other cards, the call for my 15 soul is very flexible. Like if I need more shield to survive next turn, call out Napier. If I want to push, I can just call Greed 3s or Sonicers. If I want to counter charge, I can call down Selfish Engravers instead. And still a lot more things that you can work around depending again on the situation, which is very very cool to work with. It's the only playstyle here that has this advantage because as we see, this particular playstyle lies between the Stick to 10 Soul and the Rush 15. The next advantage that I found out is that it has a very stable hand size. 
with this particular playstyle, your hand size will be sticking with five to seven cards most of the time, which is a very cool number to work with at the very least. It's not like a 10 card hand like other decks can do, but it's certainly better than just having three cards at the end of a turn. The next advantage is that this deck can adapt to the meta very effectively. In this build, you can run tech cards. So with that in mind, some slots in your deck can vary depending on the meta. If we got more supports for Biomagnus on set 3 onwards, that can still make Biomagnus compete in the meta by that time. You can easily tech those cards in your deck because you still have some slots in your deck that are very flexible. Last advantage that I found out is that this deck can still play Rush 15 if you want to. Depending on how many cards in your deck that you run that can Soul Charge 2 or more, you can still play Rush 15 if you want to. However, even though this particular playstyle is a very good playstyle in my opinion, there are still some disadvantages. First of all, it still struggles going second, especially with decks such as Bastion. A going first Bastion is really threatening to this deck unless you can really reach 15 soul on turn 3. But let's be real, a going first Bastion against any deck can possibly crumble because the deck is just that strong. And you also have to keep that in mind as well. Another disadvantage is that it still has a portion of inconsistency reaching 15 soul. This playstyle can afford to run non-soul charging cards, which means that it will have that portion of inconsistency, but at the very least, it's not gonna be like a 50-50. You will reach 10 soul on turn 3 very frequently, like 95% of the time, and then reach 15 soul on turn 4 onwards like 90% of the time. So it's still a pretty good ratio to work with, but again, sometimes you still brick. So you have to keep that in mind as well. So yeah, those were all the three playstyles of Barrow Magnus as of now. If you know some more playstyles that I haven't mentioned yet, please do tell your side in the comments because I would really love to learn from you and also for everyone to see as well. Also, I would like to ask you guys as well, which particular playstyle that I mentioned was your favorite or the one that you prefer the most? If you guys have some more questions that you want to ask, please leave those in the comments because I would really like to do my best on answering them. Thank you again everyone for everything so far. Together, let us raise the flag of Dark States and I'll see you guys next time.